Hello artist, Meeta Dani here. In this video, I'm going to share with you how you can create a beautiful, flawless, flat wash on your watercolor paper without messing it up. So let's get started. Okay, before I start, I will share that I have kept this paper at a 30 degree angle and there is a book below this paper so that I can keep that paper at a 30 degree angle. Now, if you're asking why 30 degree and why not 45 degree or 50 degree or 90 degree angle, that is because 30 degree is quite manageable. If you keep the paper this much tilted, gravitational force will work a lot on the paint and the paint can simply fall down and you can get into trouble. If I keep it at 30 degree angle or 35 degree angle, that is quite suitable and the gravitational force will still work on the paper and you can avoid back runs. Now, when you're creating a flat wash, it is very important that the brush will move from one end to another without lifting in the middle. So for that, will you select this brush or this brush? And that depends upon how much area you would like to cover. Now, let's say this is a very small area you have to cover. In that case, you can use this brush. This brush will easily cover from this point to this point. On the other hand, if you want to make this much big painted area with flat wash, in that case, a bigger brush will be ideal for you. So to demonstrate, I will use this bigger brush. And I have kept this paint ready. Make sure that you have got enough paint on your palette. So I have used ultramarine blue. You can use any paint, whichever you like. Make sure that your brush is holding quite a lot of paint. Paint from one point to another without lifting. And in case there are some small, small problems, that is okay. Again, dip the brush in the paint and take from another point till the first point. I'm just overlapping 100%. Now, again, I'm going from first point to another point. Now, why I'm repeating that? That is because I need to get this watercolor bead. Again, I'm going from first point to this point. Now you will see that the watercolor bead is formed. Now, once the bead is formed, now you can slightly come down, still you're overlapping it and going from one end to another end. Again, taking a little bit more paint and going from second end to the first end and repeating the process. Each time you are overlapping the first brush stroke so that the paint is quite uniformly getting applied. Each time I'm slightly moving down and each time I'm picking up a little more paint on the brush when I'm reaching one end to the other. Okay, so each time I'm lifting up, I'm dipping the brush in the paint and going from the second end to the first and first end to the second. Now, what are the points that you need to remember is if you get any kind of problem at the top, don't go back and try to change. Just keep painting and always make sure that there is a little bit watercolor bead at the bottom. Now, let's say you want to end here. So what you have to do, take out all the paint from this brush with a paper towel, like this, and then you soak it up. It is very, very important that you soak up the extra paint at the bottom. If you don't soak it up, then what will happen, this paint will move towards the top and will cause back run resulting into a watercolor blue. So if you see that there is no extra paint, I can see a little bit paint here, which I will soak up. Now, you can see that when I'm painting for the first time, there are a very, very little imperfections. And this imperfection can be because of the painting process or because of the paper itself. This paper may have imperfections. And because of that also, there can be imperfections. So once this paper will dry, then I will apply another layer of paint exactly in the same process. Okay, so now I have given quite some time to the paper, almost 20, 25 minutes, and I'm returning back to the painting for helping you understand how to apply the second layer. Now you must be wondering why, Meeta, we have to apply the second layer. You know, when we apply the very first layer, many a times the result is not absolutely perfect. Absolutely flawless results requires you three, four, five, six layers of paint so that it looks very uniform. Also, we are using ultramarine blue, which is a little bit granulating, and that also gives a little bit uneven look, right? So if you apply two, three, four, five layers instead of just one or two layer, the result will look much better and flawless, okay? So I will help you understand how to apply layer number two. Know that this paper is completely dry. 
there should not be any hurry. If you touch this area, it should not be any different when you touch this area. So give it enough time. Now just see, even if there is minor flaws out there and there are granulation happening here because of the paint itself, okay? If you want a very smooth, flawless wash in that case, do the exact same thing which you had done in the first layer. So I'm dipping my brush and the paper is also at an angle of 30 and I'm taking the brush right from the top and going from one end to the second end without lifting and then again dipping the brush in the paint and going from the second end to the first end without lifting, repeating the process so that I'm getting a watercolor bead, right? So that bead formation must be there so that you don't get any brush stroke marks. And now I'm getting a watercolor bead. So I'm just moving slightly down. Still I'm overlapping. This overlapping helps me to get a good finish without any brush stroke marks, right? And since we have kept the paper at an angle, the gravitational force is working on the bead and the paint is not running upside. If you keep the paper flat and not tilted, then there is a chance that the watercolor paint may travel upside and you get a back run causing watercolor bloom. Now we are almost at the end and it is time to stop. So what I have to do, I have to remove all the paint from the brush so that the brush is now thirsty. And now I will, with the tip of the brush, I will just soak all the paint which is there at the bottom. And again, make the brush thirsty and again, soak up the bottom part. So now I have applied the second layer. Now can you see that it is looking much more uniform as compared to the first layer of paint. So I hope you have understood how to apply the second layer of paint with a flat brush. Now, it is totally up to your requirement. You may apply one layer, you may apply two layers, or you may apply five layers for a wonderful finish. If I'm taking yellow color paint, or if I'm taking some other color paint, which is quite opaque, in that case, the flaws are not that visible. But if I'm taking transparent paint, or if I'm taking granulating paint, then even with slightest difference of the paper quality, we can get some uneven patches, okay? And therefore, if we apply multiple layer of paints, we can get a wonderful, flawless finish for a flat wash, right? I hope you found this video helpful. In the exact same manner, you can apply multiple layer of paints for getting more rich result, okay? I hope you got it and practice well. Without practicing, you will not get the confidence just by watching.